Okay, so I accidentally hit a button on my phone and had to do this video in two parts. I just want you to know how much I love you guys that I'm doing this at 3.30 on Friday afternoon. Um, anyway, sorry. So um, this graph right here, or the translations up and down, this plus two over here controls the up and down movement. Now this is when your, um, your equations are in vertex form. So we could, if we wanted to make this true vertex form, we could put a plus zero out here um, and a plus zero out here to make it true vertex form. But um, the graph here of x squared plus two, notice that if we wanted to spread this out, this would be x plus zero squared plus two. What's inside the parentheses is what gets changed all backwards and upside down. What's outside away from the parentheses is no longer affected by that opposite portal Alice in Wonderland thing that's going on over here. So you actually do what this number tells you to do. So this number would tell you to move up two spaces. So we're going to move the graph up two spaces. Now it's difficult um, to, with a parabola to graph like all these points out here um, and to keep track of where they're all moving. So pay attention to where the vertex is moving and then take the rest of the graph with it. Okay. So now this one has a negative three so negative three tells us to move down three spaces. And I don't know how to count spaces because I know what these graphs are supposed to look like, but um, if you need to get a few points in there, I go over here, I go one space over, one squared is one, so I go up one space. Um, so notice our graph really, other than, you know, I'm not a perfect drawer of graphs, but it's basically the same size and shape, just has shifted down three spaces. Now dilations, remember, are where um, it changes the size of the figure, but not the shape. So a dilation is when the number being multiplied out here affects the size of the graph. But if we remember, we could have, we can put a zero in there to make it true vertex form. So you've got this stuff that's all in this like force field around the x squared and the parentheses. So what happens in the force field? Everything becomes opposite. So it seems like if you were to multiply by a large number or a number bigger than one, like two, it seems like your graph would get bigger. However, it doesn't. Actually, the opposite happens and your graph gets smaller. So what the graph here would look like is like this. And see how it's tucked inside um, inside the graph of x squared. Now, conversely over here, again, we could rewrite this as 0.5x plus 0 squared plus 0 if you want to keep it in true vertex form. But out here we're being, we're multiplying by a number that's less than 1, between 0 and 1. So what's actually going to happen here is our graph is going to get bigger. Because remember, opposite land if you're multiplying by a decimal, you would think it was going to make the graph smaller, but what it actually does is makes it bigger. Okay. 
Now the last one is reflection. And when it comes to parabolas, reflections are pretty easy. So we have our regular graph of x squared here. And then our graph of negative 1x squared, all it does is flips the graph over the x-axis. Okay, so what I want to do real quick is I want to show you these same graphs graphed a little neater on Desmos. So right now what we have here is the graph of x squared, y equals x squared. So pay attention to that graph, and then I'm going to turn on the graph of x plus 2 squared. So 2 inside the parentheses, meaning it should shift it to the left, because inside the parentheses is opposite land. And sure enough, there we have a graph shifted to the left. So now if we turn on the graph of x minus 3 squared, that should shift our graph to the right because opposite land. Oh, hold on. It's very hard to do things through my phone. Okay, so you see the new graph is over here in green. So if we turn off the graph for x minus 3, we can do the graph of x squared plus 2. So remember the plus 2 is out here away from opposite land. And so it should just shift the graph upward. And there we go. There's our new graph shifted up to x squared minus 3 should shift our graph down 3. There we go, down 3. Remember our graph of 2x squared, even though it seems like it should make the graph bigger, actually is supposed to make our graph smaller. And there it is. Unfortunately, it's the same color, but it's inside the, this is the new graph. This is the old one. And then we have our graph of 0.5x squared. So remember that one's supposed to make our graph bigger because it's opposite land and it seems like it should make it smaller, but it actually should make it bigger. So there it is, bigger. And then, and I know it seems a little weird because our graph of that looked a lot different, but notice the graph of ours is a lot smaller. Um, the one on Desmos goes um, from negative 10 to 10, right to left. If we were to change the settings on this, if we did it negative 4 to 4, like our, um, like our paper, it would look a lot more similar to our paper. Okay, and then if we do the graph, let's shut off that one, we do the graph of y equals negative 1x squared. That should flip it over the vertex, and there's that new graph on the bottom. So this is negative 1x squared, this is just x squared. I actually think our graph went from negative 5 to 5. Which that's why that might look just a little different from what it looked like on your notes. Let's go back and look at the 0.5x. That's a little bit more like it. Okay. So we've got all the transformations done on the front. So let's flip over to the back of this paper. And what we have here are just a few questions. Um, kind of pertaining to the qualities or properties of this, these graphs and the transformations. So here's a graph here. I want to point out that this up here, this is the, the x and y axis. So in looking at this graph, I see first that it's upside down, which tells me from my notes page that to reflect it, it has to be multiplied by a negative. If it's a negative, it opens downwards. 
So that means I can get rid of this one with the positive 3 and this one with the positive 3. Now this one up here is a little weird because it looks different. This one's in standard form, the rest are in vertex form. So I'm going to ignore this one for a minute and um, see what we might come up with. So I want to look at this one. So this function, negative 3, so it would open downward. And then it's x plus 1. Remember, this is all opposite land. So negative, or I'm sorry, plus 1 would mean actually a move in the negative direction or left. And this is actually moved to the right from the x-axis or the y-axis. So it's not this function right here, but this one right here has it having moved one space to the right, which is what this has done. It's moved to the right. I don't know how many spaces because I can't see the grid lines, but it's moved to the right of the y-axis. And then it's also moved down. Because remember, this number is outside of opposite land, and this controls the up and down movement. So it gets moved two spaces down. So this looks like a completely reasonable function. But now we have to look at that one up at the top. So what we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to change this function so it looks like that one. Because if these two functions, this first one and this fourth one, are equivalent, then they both would be represented by that same graph. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my vertex form function. It's simpler to move the vertex form function to standard form than vice versa. It can be done. You could change this by completing the square, but it's a little easier to do this one, I think. So this would be negative 3. I do my, I can't do the parentheses because there's nothing for x. So I can, I have to skip the parentheses for right now and just leave x minus 1 as a number. And so I'm going to do the square, the exponent next. So I've got x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus 2. So over here to the side, I'm going to do the box with x minus 1 and x minus 1. So this right here becomes x squared, negative 1x, negative 1x, and positive 1. So these two things right here get replaced with x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I bring down my minus 2. So now I have to distribute that negative 3 inside the parentheses. So negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6x, and then negative 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then I still have to bring down that negative 2. But I can combine negative 3 and negative 2, and I can turn it into minus 5. So negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 5, that's what I have up there. So this function will also work as well. Okay, so next question. Hero started with the function f of x equals 2x plus 4 squared minus 2. Write the function that would result in shifting the graph of this equation down 5 units and write 2 units. So down 5, I'm looking at the negative 2 because the negative 2 controls the up and down. So let's rewrite this function so I've got a little bit of room to work. Alright, so the negative 2 I want to go five more units downward, so I'm going to subtract five from that. Write two units. This is what controls my left and right movement. But if I want to go to the right two units in opposite land, I have to actually add, or I'm sorry, subtract two. So if I want to go right two units, I have to subtract two in opposite land to go the opposite direction. So g of x is going to be 2 
times x, in this case plus 4 minus 2 would be plus 2 squared, and then minus 2 minus 5 gives us minus 7. So let's take a look at that on the graph and see what it looks like. All right, so here's my graph of 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 2. And notice I have zeros, it appears, at negative 3, 0, and negative 5, 0. And then down here at negative 4, um, negative 2. So now I want to graph the new function to check and see if we're right. So 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 7. So the blue one is our new function. So let's look at where the vertex, see if we can get the vertex to pop up on that one and stay. There we go. And we'll get the vertex to pop up on this one and stay. All right, so what we want to know is did we go down 5 and left 2? So we started at negative 2. We went left 1, 2. So from here we went left 1, 2. And then, or, sorry, wrong way. We went right to. <laughs> we went one, two, and then we went down five more spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that one we did correctly. All right, so now we want to take a look at the functions f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 8 times x plus 3 squared minus 6. So we need to circle the appropriate underlined words and fill in the blanks with the correct numbers. So these things where you have to circle the words, on your end of course exam, they would be like a drop down menu where you have to like click a box and they open up. But for right now, you just circle the words. So the graph of g of x would be wider or narrower than the graph of f of x. Well, the difference here, this number right here is what controls wider or narrower, and it's a number larger than 1. So remember, opposite land, you would think it would be wider, but in opposite land, everything is the opposite, so it's actually narrower. Okay? So then the graph of g of x would be blank spaces to the right or left of f of x. So the number that controls right or left movement is the um, plus 3. So it would be 3 spaces, and now it's positive, which would make us think to go right. But remember, opposite land. So actually, we want to go left of f of x. And then the graph of g of x would be how many spaces up or down from the graph of f of x. Well, this negative 6 controls up and down. So it would be six spaces. And this is outside of opposite land, so it's actually in the negative direction, so it would actually be down. Okay, and then last um, set of questions over here. I wanna match these functions up here to uh, their graphs. So I'm gonna kinda re-outline some of these graphs because a little bit of the graphs from the back of this paper are showing through. And here, and here. Okay, so we're gonna match these graphs up here at the top, um, A, B, C, D, E, and F, to um, the graph of their, of, hold on, <laughs> sorry. We're going to match the functions up here to the graph that represents the function down here at the bottom. Okay. If you're from like my second period class watching this, you're used to me fumbling over words. By the time seventh period comes around, usually I have things down pretty well. But with all of you out for testing this week, I haven't had to teach much. So you're not getting my A game right now. Sorry. Um, so this one right here, a g of x equals negative x minus 2 squared. Um, I know from the negative, I'm looking for a graph that goes upside down. Um, the minus 2 tells me I'm looking for a graph that's shifted to the right. 
but there's no vertex here. There's no other number here. So what I really could do is add a zero um, just to make sure that I know where the vertex of my graph should be. So the vertex of my graph on this um, problem right here should be at positive two zero and it should be opening downward. So this one opens downward, but it's not at positive two zero. It should be like up here touching the X axis. Um, that one's not facing the right direction. This one's not facing the right direction. Here's one that's facing downward. It's the vertex is over here, could be at two and it's touching the axis. So that appears to be my best bet. This one over here that's upside down is completely off the axis. So that, that vertex would be like a negative and then a positive. So this one seems to be the graph that matches A. Um, B, you notice in front of the x minus two squared, there is no number, there's no positive or negative. So it's gonna be opening upward. So that means it's this one, this one, or this one. And my vertex would be at positive two, because remember opposite land, positive two, positive two. So this one's facing upward, but the vertex, vertex appears to be at positive two, zero. This one's facing upward. It's at a positive and a positive, um, could be positive two, positive two. And then this one is opening upward, but it's the vertex is probably at positive two, but it, it, it's at a negative Y coordinate. So it would have to be this one right here that matches B. So C is negative X plus two squared minus two. So negative tells me it's an upside down graph. So it's this one or that one, because we've already used D. So it's either A or E. It has a vertex at negative two, because that's plus two opposite land. So negative two, negative two. So my vertex here is at a negative, but then a positive Y value. So it would have to be this one. This one is back and down. So C would go right here with graph A, which leaves me just these three. So this one right here, 0.5 times X minus two. So that would be bigger than the other ones, but I'm having, I, I'm leaning toward this one. Um, it's positive also, which means it has to open upward. So it's gonna be either B or F. I'm leaning toward F because F looks like it's wider than the other graphs, but I wanna double check the, um, the vertex on that one and just make sure that we're in the right direction. So the vertex would be positive two, negative two. So if we go over two, down two, that would be that graph right there. So that's letter D. All right, so letter E, G of X equals two X minus two squared. And if we want real ver true vertex form, we can put a zero out here. So plus zero. So our vertex, we're looking for a graph that's a little narrower. It opens upward. So let's see, I only have two graphs left, and this is the only one that opens upward. But let's just double check our vertex. Our vertex should be at positive two, zero. So over two, up zero. So yeah, this one's E. And then this one here should be F. So it opens downward because that negative sign tells us it opens downward. Um, plus two in the parentheses means that it shifts left two and then up two. So from here we go left two up two. So yeah, that one is F. Okay, so if you've been out because of testing, if you've missed things, um, I know this week and next week because of testing are gonna be difficult, but I, it's super important that you, you know, try to keep up with the notes that you've gotten. If you need to come get paper copies of the notes from me or you can print them off of focus um, we're kind of getting down you know to the last couple of days here and we need to make sure that you're getting um, every last little bit of information you can possibly get 
I'm going to make some separate videos, I think, if I can find them working out some of the problems that we worked out in Algebra Boot Camp, in case you want to see those. If I can't find those particular ones, I'll make up some new ones. So um, stay tuned for those. Okay, have a great weekend, you guys.